What's up YouTube? It's your boy Joe with Meteoric Serpents coming back at you again with a new video this week. Guys, today's video is going to be a little bit different than my previous videos. It's not going to be as revolved around snakes as much. More so, this is a DIY type of video. Uh, an easy and cheap way to improve your reptiles, whether it's an enclosure or a rack system. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, making a you know, DIY humid hide and, you know, using some everyday objects for uh, other parts of the enclosure. Let's get into it. So guys, the first step of making these DIY humid hides, and you know, like I said, it's gonna be a cheap way. So the first thing you're gonna do is mosey on down to your nearest Dollar Tree, and you're gonna go inside and you're gonna look for this. Most Dollar Trees should have these. I know other people who use them as well. This is a McCormick storage container. It's 96 ounces, just a really good size. Um, I'm using this size for adult colubrids and you may not think so, but even like a five foot snake can really wrap around in here. Um, and that's kind of the goal of this. And besides this being just a humid hide, this can also be used as a lay box. It's very versatile. Uh, the animals like it, you know, when they're in shed, they're gonna go in here and, you know, stay moist and help with all of that. But again, Dollar Tree, so these are $1.25 each. I picked up a ton of them and they're just really great. They seal on tight. You kind of just have to press on all the sides to get it. I know some people even use these for hatchling colubrids, which I think is inventive as well. It's a really cheap enclosure and you could stack them up perfectly they're very stackable the next tool you're going to need is a soldering iron now if there are any kids um you know even some younger teenagers watching this video uh parents i do not recommend letting your kids do this themselves this is a I don't want to say dangerous but like it could be a harmful object this gets very hot uh it's a tool you know that basically gets extremely hot and it's able to burn through the plastic which i'm going to show to make a hole or an opening um so that obviously the snakes can get into the hide this was picked up from harbor freight and you know this actual soldering iron was only four bucks and then i paid an extra like uh six or seven dollars for shipping because i didn't have one right near me but if you have a local one literally like four and a half dollars super super cheap and affordable one of the last things you'll need for this humid hide is orchid moss um orchid moss better known in the reptile hobby as sphagnum moss uh you can actually get these in bulk at home depot now while this doesn't look like a huge kind of bag it's actually very very tightly packed so you'll find that you're able to get a lot more use out of just one of these that you think these packages go for around six to seven dollars each so again guys keeping that price very very minimal and we're going to show you how easy it is to actually make this but yeah again the orchid moss uh do the all natural I, I didn't see any other ones on the shelf, but this is the one I saw. I picked up a few of them and I've already used this for a couple hides already. And you could see that, you know, the package has barely been used. So guys, the first step here with the soldering iron. So it's just the straight tool that has a plug at the end of it, as you could see there. And you're basically just going to leave it and let it get hot. You're going to plug it in, obviously, let it get hot. And then you go about doing it from there. I'm basically going to time lapse me making the hole and stuff because one, it gets a little smoky and two, uh, you know, it, it takes about a minute or two. So I'm just going to show that real quick as soon as this gets hot and, you know, we'll be on a roll. your hole drilled it's time for your orchid moss or sphagnum moss whatever you want to call it what's interesting dry 
uh, sphagnum moss almost feels like um, like packing peanuts, like styrofoam-ish. It's kind of interesting. But anyway, here is your sphagnum moss. It's all, you know, moist. I just sprayed it down, if you guys just saw. So it's all good. You spray that with water. You're, again, making that kind of humid hide a little bit more. And then put your lid on. Make sure it's closed. Now you're good to go. There is your humid hide and lay box for, you know, whatever species you're using it for. I'm using it for colubrids. I mean, you could do this with geckos. You could do this with anything because I know people kind of do a similar thing. And there's your entry hole. Um, I think for my snakes, this is wide enough. Obviously, you can go further if you'd like. There's plenty of room here to make a, an opening. But yeah, this is pretty solid. I'm using this for a Texas rat. So let's kind of show you uh, her tub and how it's going in there. So here's the Texas rat in here. And here's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Using flat cardboard is actually a really good tool. And right before I started the video, and I'm sorry I did it, this snake was sitting right under the cardboard. Uh, and you can kind of see the snake in the corner right here. I'm gonna show her to you. Um, so I've been stacking the substrate a little bit higher and then essentially just, you know, so, you know, it's kind of deep. And then, you know, just putting this flat top down there gives it almost like a little cave entrance way to get under there. A lot of these snakes like being like that. And, you know, in the wild, when you're herping, a lot of people, what they do is like they're flipping tin, they're flipping rocks. And this is what the snakes will do. They kind of, you know, those things are pressed flat to the ground and they find a little opening to kind of get in there. So let's show you this girl. If she's going to let me hold her, she is. So she's looking fantastic. On the last video, this is the one I was calling radioactive. And I think the name still fits. I mean, just look at these colors here. And she's trying to get away from me. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to put that hide back there. We're going to move the water bowl over a little bit. And then we are simply going to place this in here like that. And it's nice and snug just like that so we got the clean water bowl there she cleared out some of the substrate sorry about that um clean water bowl then we have the humid hide and the cardboard so let's see you know what she thinks about this hide see if we can get her to kind of go in there well i'm sure she'll like it she's just not used to it uh she's kind of going around in there but um i've been having a lot of snakes really just sit in there uh here's another one for you i'm gonna cut it to the next one so here guys is my adult female thai bamboo rat snake or op coxi uh she literally you know these guys are a little more humid species they like the humidity i find her in here all day long she just loves this container and love be loves being in that sphagnum moss i think it's a really great idea and just to elaborate more on the cardboard you know some people may look at this and think it's just kind of cheap looking it looks kind of whack honestly guys i mean i'm not setting up these crazy bioactive enclosures and even though it's not naturalistic with these like human items in here it's still serving the purpose and doing the job of what these animals really want and what they get in the wild. So that's really what I want is to achieve what they want in the wild. And, you know, sometimes you could use, you know, these kind of DIY things to do that. Not everything has to be super naturalistic or super bioactive. Plus me keeping in racks and having a decent sized collection and allows for cleaning to be a lot easier, you know, with cardboard if they poop on that can quickly change it out with something new. My parents are always ordering stuff, so there's always boxes in the recycle. So, you know, I'm recycling, I'm using that material and I, I just think it's great. So I do have to admit, as amazing it would be to, for me to say, oh, I came up with these ideas, these are all my own. They're not. Uh, I got them from some of my friends, my actually, you know, my recent podcast guests on the Kluber Corruption podcast, uh, which you could find on this channel, but they kind of gave me the ideas and I took it all and put it all together. And I just think it's really awesome to do this with these enclosures or these tubs. Um, I've really been looking towards, you know, ways I can make 
these you know tubs a little bit better for these animals you know just for overall engagement interaction and things that they could use in the enclosure um you know so i i just really like implementing these things i think it's upping my husbandry and seeing you know new behaviors and observations kind of seeing how they interact with these certain things because you know you may not think much of it but it's really cool for me to open up that tub and see that animal in their humid hide or sitting under that cardboard and you know if they're not some some of them will sit in the water bowl whatever but again it's just interesting to see these kind of behaviors one thing before we run this outro guys i did something pretty cool that i'm excited about i did launch a patreon now this is a little bit centered around you know both this youtube content as well as the colubrid corruption podcast in particular one aspect about this hobby that you know i've grown to love is really the community building aspect uh meeting all different people has really been awesome and the education they've provided to me i really want to do my part and give back to the community um you know not that i think i'm the best person in the world but you know I think I've I've learned a lot over the years. I have good experience with different things. And I think I could speak on a lot of things. Besides that, um, you know, I never want it to be about a money grab. Obviously, Patreon involves money, but I do, you know, this is going to help support me, what I'm doing with my animals, and also the podcast, you know, making new endeavors, uh, doing things to make the podcast better. Um, I said it on the last episode, but... There's a lot more work and money that goes into it besides me just flipping on my computer and hitting record because it's not as simple as that. I put a lot of time and effort into both that production and just these animals in general and bringing you guys this content, you know? Uh, I work a full-time job and this, this is a lot of extra work that I love doing, don't get me wrong, but you know, it's extra. So by joining that, you're supporting me and you're also joining hopefully what becomes a great community. That's going to be the first link in the description of today's video. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you're hitting that like button, hitting the subscribe, and then hit that notification bell so you stay on top of every single piece of content we put on this channel, which includes shorts, videos, podcasts, whatever it is, make sure you stay on top of it. I really appreciate it, guys. This has been an awesome video. Again, join the Patreon. I think it's going to be awesome and building this community and stay tuned for the next one. Uh, and I'll see you on Sunday on the Kaluber Corruption Podcast at 7.30 p.m. EST. Peace out, guys. Have a great week and weekend whenever it is. Peace.